Imagine a dense, humid forest where you can't see the sky for the trees. Many of the trunks are so huge that you would need over an hour to complete one circle around them. In the sky, you can see some fascinating creatures with some crests. Incredible giants make their way from the thickets, crushing everything in their path. Can you imagine that this bulletproof armor doesn't even have a single unprotected spot? What is this mysterious world? Perhaps some distant planet? It may remind you of Pandora from the iconic Avatar movie. But you don't need to go that far. In fact, this is what Earth looked like over a hundred million years ago. Then, in the Cretaceous period, the world was just teeming with incredible creatures. Imagine a multi-ton Mementosaurus that shook the whole forest with the stomp of its huge feet. If the trees caught fire, the giant could easily put it out even at the treetops. To do this, it only had to fully stretch its long neck like a fire escape. Of course, the ancient reptile didn't put out anything, but used its long neck to reach some real delicacies, like the most tender and juicy young shoots at the treetops. The Cretaceous period had so many fascinating animals. Where did the twins of ostriches and kangaroos come from in the early Cretaceous? And how did the ancient reptiles create real fight clubs for training the young? Early Cretaceous Dinosaurs. The Cretaceous period, or Cretaceous, started 145 million years ago. This is the longest epoch of the Mesozoic era. Scientists divided into the early and late Cretaceous. The first period lasted almost 45 million years and ended 101.5 million years ago. Compared to the Jurassic period, the Earth changed in many ways. The Jurassic Cretaceous extinction led to the shift in food chains that reshaped other ecosystems as well. Giant sauropods partially disappeared and the Stegosaurus died out. But their niche was quickly taken by new species. Dinosaurs stood at the top of the evolutionary pyramid. They continued to thrive on Earth. By the early Cretaceous, the supercontinent Pangaea had split into Laurasia and Gondwanda. The tectonic shifts started to divide these huge land masses into modern continents. As the Atlantic Ocean expanded, it formed the North American Cordilleras. Approximately 110 million years ago, the Mid-Atlantic Ridge separated South America from Africa, which formed new tectonic plates. The same process in the Indian Ocean pushed India northward. Australia and Antarctica started to resemble their modern shape. At that time, the climate on Earth was relatively cool. The cooling of the last Jurassic epoch lasted until the end of the early Cretaceous. There is evidence suggesting that the snowfalls were common in the areas near the poles. Also, the tropics became wetter during the Triassic and Jurassic periods. In general, the Earth was warmer in the early Cretaceous than now. The very humid and warm climate of the early Cretaceous caused forests to spread even further. They were filled with angiosperms such as cicades, ginkgo, and nitrophytes. However, flowering plants hadn't yet emerged. Many coniferous trees grew near the poles. A lot of tree ferns also grew in the forests, and their grass relatives took over unforested areas. The Polypodiales fern was extremely common during the Cretaceous, accounting for 80% of this plant class. What makes Polypodiales unique is their photoreceptors. Thus, such ferns could efficiently perform photosynthesis in low light, for example, in the shade of huge trees. Due to the supercontinent split and further movement of tectonic plates, warm shallow seas flooded vast areas. A wide variety of marine organisms lived in these water bodies. 
Rays, modern sharks, and bony fish became commonplace. Huge bony fish, Axelridicthes, inhabited sea lagoons, fresh lakes, and rivers. Most of these species were from one meter, three feet three inches, to two meters, six feet seven inches long. The giants ate small fish and krill, like its modern relative, the coelacanth. Axelridicthes had elongated, flat, and wide skull. It allowed the fish to suck food from empty spaces between stones and crevices in underwater rocks, much like a vacuum cleaner. At the same time, aquatic reptiles were undoubtedly at the top of the food chain in seas and lakes. There were still some ichthyosaurs around, but they were mostly replaced by different plesiosaur species. The amazing Machaira rosica was probably about 5 meters long, 16 feet, but had a short neck. Its hind and forelimbs ended in long straight flippers which allowed this plesiosaur to swim quickly and hunt fish and other aquatic animals. Once in the mouth of the Machaira rosica, the prey had no chance to escape. Scientists believe that this animal's teeth are unique. They have a triangular shape, numerous grooves, and small teeth along the ridges. Such weaponry helped the predator hold slippery fish and quickly rip it into pieces before swallowing it. On the contrary, other plesiosaur species, namely Elasmosaurus, had incredibly long necks that consisted of somewhere between 32 to 76 vertebrae. At the beginning of the Cretaceous, Elasmosaurus was on average about 6 meters long, 20 feet, and weighed up to several tons. These extraordinary creatures mainly ate crustaceans and mollusks. Long necks allowed Elasmosauruses to plunge their heads deep into the water in order to scoop up as many animals as possible with their mouths. Aerial predators also look for food near the water. Real birds were already flying in the early Cretaceous sky. And their predecessors, the Archaeopteryx, were quite populous at that time. These small, crow-sized creatures had curved beaks and very sharp teeth. They could instantly tear apart prey such as small reptiles, fish, and insects. But most of the niches of aerial predators were occupied by numerous winged reptiles called pterosaurs. If we could see the Ichrendraco pterosaur in the sky, we would instantly think of the planet Pandora from Avatar. This creature is very similar to the dragon from the iconic picture. But do you think that this incredible flying reptile decorated itself with a crest just for fun? Well, it didn't put it on like a crown. The crest was on the lower jaw of the Ichrendraco. It helped the reptile to hook up the fish and firmly hold it with its teeth. And three centimeters of the edge of the Ikran Draco's jaw had as many as 4.5 teeth. A special hook was also found on its crest. It may have served as an attachment point for a food storing throat pouch, similar to the modern pelican. This outlandish creature was most likely not as big as a dragon, although its exact size is unknown. So far, only a few very elongated animal skulls have been found, some with a predominant blade-like ridge on the underside. Pterosaur skulls are from 26.8 centimeters, 10.5 inches, to 28.6 centimeters, 11.2 inches long. On land, the moist Cretaceous forests were filled with various insects, including some new species. The most ancient ants known today were already creating their colonies, and some relatives of butterflies and moths called Lepidoptera began to fly. Aphids lived on the trees, grasshoppers chirped in the thickets, and gall wasps flew in the sky. Termites also existed in the Cretaceous period, having evolved from cockroach ancestors. In modern ecosystems, they play an important role in decomposing plant residues and other waste. This suggests that prehistoric termites did a similar job. Paleontologists also believe that insects have already developed social behavior by building nests together. 
Virtually all corners of the planet in the Cretaceous period were filled with reptiles. Many dinosaurs, turtles, and snakes lived in forests and water bodies. But most of them were dinosaurs. There were animals the size of a chicken, but mostly large reptiles prevailed. The small Struthiomimus, which is literally translated as an ostrich imitator, indeed resembled this modern bird. Struthiomimus was about 4.3 meters, 14 feet long, and weighed approximately 150 kilograms, 330 pounds. These outlandish animals had beautiful big eyes and rather repulsive toothless jaws. They had long thin arms and hands. The reptile's three fingers were about the same length, and their claws were slightly bent. This probably allowed dinosaurs to sometimes hunt fish and insects, although they mostly ate plant foods. Most likely, Struthiomimus served as prey for large Cretaceous predators. However, it was certainly not easy for predators to deal with these dinosaurs. The reptiles had unusually powerful hind limbs and relatively short, stiff tails. This allowed them to perfectly balance when running, turning, and jumping. Struthiomimus is thought to have run at about 50 to 80 kilometers per hour, 31 to 50 miles per hour, so it could easily escape enemies. Other herbivorous reptiles called Mamenchosaurus could easily make it into the record book of the Cretaceous period if dinosaurs wrote it. Of all the ancient reptiles known to paleontologists, they had the longest neck. These animals were up to 26 meters, 85 feet long, and weighed up to 80 tons. And their famous necks averaged about 14 meters, 46 feet. If such a giant somehow miraculously got into our world, it could easily look through the roof of a three-story building. However, there is another candidate for having the longest neck among the Cretaceous animals the Seismosaurus. With a 36-meter body, 118 feet, and a weight of 30 to 50 tons, it could possibly stretch its neck as high as 20 meters. But unfortunately, there's not enough information to know this for sure. Only a few bones of such herbivorous reptiles have been found, which isn't enough for an accurate assessment. However, paleontologists were already able to learn something interesting about the giants. Most likely, Seismosaurus lived in the steppes and swamps. Just like Brachiosauruses, they spent most of their lives in the water. The young ensured their safety by living in herds, while adults more often lived alone. These dinosaurs ate mainly swamp and aquatic vegetation. But none of them could compare with Ankylosaurs. These Cretaceous creatures, armored from head to toe, were probably not afraid of anyone in the world. Their entire body was covered with a shell in the form of bony spikes and plates. Moreover, the larger ones alternated with the smaller ones. Even the skull and the outer back of the lower jaw of this monster were armored. Those are some super formidable weapons. However, the monstrous creature didn't need it for attacking others, as these reptiles were exclusively herbivorous. The dinosaurs used all their armor only to protect themselves from numerous predators. In general, ankylosaurs were massive quadrupedal creatures with short, powerful limbs. Their abdomen was unusually very low, only 30 centimeters, one foot, above the ground. The small triangular teeth and a long flexible tongue proved that these animals could breathe while chewing the leaves. This also allowed them to eat up to a ton of greenery per day. Ankylosaurus tended to feed on vegetation at a height of one meter or lower. Scientists believe that their diet included short ferns, cicades, and other angiosperms. Predators certainly avoided the herds of such living fortresses as ankylosaurs. Even the famous tyrannosaurs were cautious. By that time, these reptiles had already begun to dominate among the carnivorous dinosaurs. Tyrannosaurus had a keen sense of smell and vision, powerful jaws and strong, sharp teeth. 
T-Rex weighed up to seven tons, which suggests they had impressive muscle mass. The strength and ferocity of these animals was something unheard of. There is even a theory that Tyrannosaurs from a young age went through military training in the best traditions of the Cretaceous. Scientists believe that T-Rex organized special fight clubs for the young. There, the reptiles bit each other with terrible force, but most likely they didn't try to kill each other. Paleontologists learned about this by examining bite marks on animal skulls. But T. rexes always hunted alone, and only a few animals on the planet could stand up to them. Carcrodontosaurus was their only worthy rival in the early Cretaceous. These carnivorous monsters were up to eight meters long and weighed about a ton. That is, they were longer and heavier than Tyrannosaurs. Carcrodontosauruses were called dinosaurs with sharp teeth, as they had strong dagger-like teeth. Who do you think would win in a fight between a T-Rex and a Carcrodontosaurus? It's impossible to say for sure. However, T-Rex would have likely prevailed over the shark dinosaur due to its speed, agility, and aggressiveness. Thanks to such victories, tyrannosaurs became increasingly common across the planet. This is evidenced by the growth of their number. Scientists have studied all possible factors that could impact the T-Rex population size for the entire time they existed on the planet. Researchers calculated the population density of these predators, the area of their habitat, life expectancy, as well as the total number of generations. According to the data obtained, there are about 2.5 billion T-Rex living on Earth over just 2.5 million years. But not only huge dinosaurs spread throughout the planet. Mammals successfully evolved too, but were overshadowed by reptiles. In those days, mammals were still very small, mostly the size of a shrew or a little bigger. Some of them already closely resembled modern animals. Small Tribos fenida looked almost like miniature kangaroos. It is even possible that the females carried their young in a skin fold, a pouch on their bellies. In addition, their body was partially or completely covered with fur. They had a modern structure of the ear and some other body parts. Tribos fenida lived in small burrows deep underground, so most likely they weren't easy prey for the Cretaceous predators. All these animals spent their lives looking for food, often fighting in bloody battles to win their place in the sun. Here's what their life was like in one of the corners of the Earth during the Cretaceous period. Let's imagine dense thickets of a tropical forest near a warm sea lagoon in the area of modern North America. It can be safely assumed that this place was densely populated with various animal species. Perhaps some obscure outline towered over the lagoon water for hours. Were they tree trunks or some kind of vines? In fact, neither. It was a huge long-necked plesiosaur, such as Elasmosaurus, looking out for prey. Most likely, the lagoon was full of fish, like other warm water bodies of the Cretaceous period. Plesiosaurs had enough food, these large animals were good swimmers and divers and were hardly afraid of other predators' attacks. The plesiosaurs probably hunted quietly in the lagoon for hours until their belly was fully stuffed with various mollusks. Then they would go into the shallow water to rest and digest. Mammals like Tribos fenida must have been looking for coniferous tree cones and other fruits of angiosperms for food. Some of these small herbivorous animals were marsupials, meaning that they carried their young in a pouch. The babies could feed on their mother's milk while she tried to get herself something for dinner. In the fern thickets, there were a lot of lizards scurrying about, and lizards would make a great dinner for flying reptiles. For example, the Icrandraco pterosaur. If it glided to catch the prey with its claws, the nimble lizard would, of course, try to escape into the thicket. If the hunt was unsuccessful, 
the pterosaur would have to keep hunting. Undoubtedly, it would end up at least with some catch, because the thick Cretaceous forests were filled with small creatures. However, no doubt, there lived a lot of large animals as well. Numerous herbivorous dinosaurs probably gathered for lunch in the forest. Mamenchosaurs lifted their insanely long necks like fire escapes and nibbled on the tender young leaves at the treetops. When food ran out, they moved to other forests. At the same time, these reptiles preferred to be in herds, which helped them protect the young from numerous Cretaceous predators. In contrast, armored Aptosaurus, with short necks, fed in the lower tiers of the forest. These dinosaurs also lived in herds, but hardly any predator would have dared to attack such a formidable animal. It was almost impossible to bite through the Aptosaurus's armor. But it was easier for these dinosaurs to protect the cubs together. A T-Rex that lived in that forest too also went hunting. It might have looked for a small Struthiomimus for dinner. Of course, the T-Rex is an old-timer and would easily rip a Struthiomimus apart. But don't forget that its potential prey was one of the best runners of the early Cretaceous. Struthiomimus could have easily avoided fighting the enemy. However, the Tyrannosaurus would hardly have been left without prey. This predator always had a chance to catch some little dinosaur that didn't move as fast. But what if the T-Rex had encountered another huge predator, say an eight-meter-high Carcrodontosaurus in its hunting grounds? If an aggressive Tyrannosaurus were hungry, it would probably have dared to attack the giant. It needed a lot of food. Scientists have calculated that given the size, the T-Rex could eat 120 to 150 kilograms of meat at a time. After such a meal, the predator could go without food for several days. And if it managed to defeat a larger but less aggressive Carcodontosaurus, the T-Rex would go deep into the forest for a long time to rest and digest. This is how dinosaurs and other animals lived on the lagoon banks. In the abundance of food, and in the favorable climate of the early Cretaceous. How did the life of early Cretaceous animals end? Actually, nothing noteworthy happened at the end of this era. There were no abrupt climate changes, extinctions, emergence of some animal species, or extinction of others. Scientists simply decided that the appearance of the calcareous nanofossil Prediscosfera columnata is a good point for dividing the period into the Lower and Upper Cretaceous. Be that as it may, dinosaurs continued to evolve, and their number and species diversity grew anyway. What incredible reptiles dominated the Earth in the Upper Cretaceous? How high did they climb the evolutionary ladder just before the unexpected disaster wiped them out forever? We'll talk about all this in our next episode.